Hello kids how are you all hope you all are good today the topic which we see is about adaptation in animals let us see what is adaptation adaptation is the process of developing special features to be able to survive in the given surroundings what are that special features we can see that fishes have gills to breathe in water they can't survive in the land like that camel have some special features so that they can survive only in the desert then frogs have some special features so they can survive both in land and water so they are called amphibians like that each and every organisms in this world have some special features which adapt them to survive in the given surroundings that is called as adaptation next let us see what is the need for adaptation why each and every animals are adapting themselves they are adapting themselves to find food shelter air water and to protect protect themselves from predators predators are those animals that hunt other animals so protecting from them they need for adaptation and to nurture their young ones this is the need for adaptation next going to see what are the types of adaptations so coming into the types of adaptations based on habitat so there are two types of adaptations one is based on the habitat and one is based on the habits habits food habits so many of the kids you are confused between habitat and the word habits habitat is nothing but the place where the animal lives for example the camel can live in desert so it habitat is desert like that tigers elephant or wild animals they can live only in the jungles in the similar way fish can live only in water so its habitat is water so this is habitat and what is mean by habits habits means when someone come and ask you what is your food habits you will tell whether you are a vegetarian or non vegetarian or otherwise if someone ask you what is your good habits you will tell all your good habits then someone come and ask what is your bad habits you will tell about the bad habits so what is the difference between habitat and habit means habitat is the place where the animal lives whether habits is what we are doing that is the habits next based on this habitat the animals can be divided into five types one is the terrestrial animals aquatic animals amphibians arboreal and aerial so terrestrial animals or those animals that live in land these terrestrial animals are further divided into three the animals that live in plains some animals that will be living in deserts and some living in polar regions so next coming into aquatic animals or those animals which lives in water amphibians or animals that live both in land and water so you all know all these three but these two will be different for you arboreal animals are those that live most of the time in the trees for example the monkeys and squirrels they always live in trees for a long time then their body features will also be different from other animals aerial animals includes mostly birds aerial or those animals that lives in the air that is in the flying mode so birds will be the only examples for aerial animals so moving on to the next slide adaptation based on food habits 
so based on the food habits animals are divided into five types that is the herbivorous herbivorous or plant eating animals they will eat one the plants carnivorous or flesh eating animals omnivorous or those animals that eat both of this they will also eat feeds on plants and they also feed on flesh so you know already about these three words but the parasites is little different for you this year so parasites are the small tiny organisms that lives in our body they can't survive as such they will live in other organisms that organism is termed as host so this parasite always cause harm to the host that is the relationship between parasite and the host for example lice where lice lives lice lives in our head so it feeds on our blood and it will live over there so the parasites always cause harm to this hosts next coming into the scavengers the scavengers or the animals that eats dead organic things already dead things they will eat dead organisms sorry dead organisms they will feed on dead organisms so the examples of the scavengers are hyena and some birds like crow even crows also a scavenger it will feed on dead things vulture or examples for scavengers <laughs> so moving on to the next slide so what are the special characteristic features that terrestrial animals have i already told you terrestrial animals are divided into three those are the animals living in plains animals living in the deserts and animals living in polar region first let us see what are the features of animals living in plains the animals living in plains have strong senses mainly smell and hearing capacity for example the tigers finds its feed mainly using the smell of the other animals and its hearing capacity so all the animals living in plains have high senses of smell and hearing capacity they have lungs for breath but the aquatic animals have gills some insects have spiracles so the breathing organisms will be different for different animals based on their habitats for example terrestrial animals living in plains includes these tiger cow horses etc so let us see what are the terrestrial animals special characters so they have strong sense of smell and hearing they have legs but this snake they don't have legs they crawl in the ground so they have high sense of vibrations if they hear any vibrations if there are more crowd they will understand uh with the vibration there will be more people so they can't come over there so they will hide in some places so this is the special character of this snake which is also a terrestrial animal going for the next slide animals living in deserts what are the special features of this animals living in deserts while telling desert only in our mind it will camel only will come you can see what is the special features of this camel to adapt itself for the desert condition this camel have you can see this part in this picture the camel is having a big bulk in its back this part is called as hump whenever the camel gets food it will store its extra fat in this area the camels can live without food and water for long period of time or for more than a week so at that time they will use this fat to make their energy here in this picture you can see the 
leg of the camel see the camels have special features in its leg to walk in the sand it has a pad of fat in its leg so it can walk easily in the sand but we people can't walk in the sand for a long time because our legs will get pain so this camel have this special features so they can walk in the sand and its leg is very strong to adapt to that conditions next here in this picture you can see that camel have a large eyelashes eyelashes over here this eyelashes protect their eyes from sand entry here in this picture you can see the nostrils of the camel is closed this special future camel has it can close its nostrils to prevent the entry of the sand so these are the special features of the desert animals in the next slide we can see what is aestivation and this is a bird that lives in the deserts these birds do not come for food or water in the daytime they will come outside only in the dawn and dusk period what is dawn and dusk period means only in the evening and the early morning time while going to the higher classes you will learn about that so some animals like this lung fish will undergo sleep for long period for over months weeks or months so this process is called as aestivation so aestivation is the process of going for a long summer sleep this this in this picture you can see this is a lung fish it has some special features it will body will secrete some fluid which make cocoon around it with that cocoon it will be able to live without water for a long period of time when water comes they come to the normal situation and if water is not there its body fluid will secrete and it will form a cocoon and it go for a long summer sleep why these animals are going for long summer sleep these animals are going for long summer sleep in order to prevent dehydration in order to prevent the loss of water from their body so going for the next slide next coming into the animals living in polar region so you can see here uh, polar bears and penguins these polar bears have a thick fur in their body under this fur they have fat deposited in their skin which makes this polar bear very warm and adapted to the condition so they can stay in only polar regions they can't come and stay in our plains or in the desert region so they are their body is adapted only for the polar regions these polar these polar bears mainly stay in the north pole their habitat is in the north pole side so going for the next slide these are the penguins these penguins their habitat is in south pole they can't live in plains or they can't live in the desert regions so their habitat is they can live only in snow so this penguins have some special fat in their body they are called sorry blubbers so this blubbers help the penguin to keep them warm and in other ways penguins always stays in group which also keep it very warm so these are the characteristic features of the animals living in terrestrial regions next let us see what is migration migration is the mass movement of animals from one place to another in search of food or for breeding or to escape from harsh climatic conditions in this polar region when it's become too cold the animals can't adapt to that condition 
so it will migrate to other places where they can have a normal temperature to adapt themselves in order to survive so this migration may be in search of food or for feeding or for climatic changes going for the next this slide this is the name of this bird is arctic tern this bird lives in the arctic regions this bird lives in the arctic regions when there is winter season in the arctic region these arctic tern birds will move toward the antarctic region antarctic region and they will enjoy the summer there and when winter comes in this antarctic region they will again move to the arctic region so this is the special feature of this bird next you can see here this is the arctic squirrel what is doing it is hiding in burrows so what is hibernation means some winter animals they whenever they get food in summer they will eat more and they will deposit the food as fat in their body so when winter comes these animals will sleep for a long time in caves and burrows to protect them from that winter they utilize this fat as food for that time so this process of going for long winter sleep is known as hibernation kids so that's all about today's class let's revise what are the terms we have gone through so the first one is we study about what is adaptation the second is need for adaptation the third one is types of adaptation then the fourth one is difference between habitat and habits the adaptation based on habitat five types of animals are there and depending on their food habits there are also five types we differentiate them animals into then finally we see what is migration what is estivation and what is hibernation so these are the things we have studied through this class in the next class we can go through arboreal animals aquatic animals amphibians animals and what is herbivorous what are the special features what is carnivorous animals what are special features and parasites and so on so until then it's bye from me